What's up everybody? My name is Scott Paddock and today we are going to talk about four different concepts when it comes to accenting a note. I'd like to take a second to welcome everyone back to my YouTube channel. As you know, I have not been posting quite as often as I used to because I've been on tour, on a world tour with Eros Ramazzotti uh, since January. So whenever I get home, I'd make a couple videos and I try to make them last while I'm out on the road and then when I come home, uh, I record some more videos. So I go back out next uh, Sunday. Today is September 1st. I go out on Sunday for another two months uh, in Eastern Europe. So if you'd like to follow along with that, I'm posting a lot on my Instagram. So my Instagram page is at Scott Paddock Sax. So if you'd like to follow along with that, check me out there. You'll see a whole bunch of videos of me playing the saxophone with Eros and me traveling all over the world. It's a pretty awesome uh, experience to uh, be on a, on a tour uh, this size with a artist as great as Eddowes. Okay, so back to the tutorial. Today we are going to dive really deep into accents. I know, you would think an accent just means to play the note stronger, but there are actually a couple different things you can do to make your accent sound crispier, uh, more clear, and way better. To do this, we are going to use the Charlie Parker standard Yardbird Suite, which I played in the intro, and this is going to give us the four different types of accents that we are going to talk about. Now, the first one is just a regular accent. So accent obviously means to play the note stronger. So I'm gonna play this first phrase and I'm just gonna use regular accents so you can actually hear what the accent is. So if you hear, I'm bringing out three notes really strong. This A, the G, and the E. Those are the three main notes I'm bringing out. So the first one is our first note and then the next one is the goal note and then the long note after that. Okay, so the first concept on an accent is just to accent the note. Which you probably already know how to do that. You understand what that is, so I'm not going to really talk about that. It just means play the note stronger. The next concept is what I call the ghost note accent. The ghost note accent is when you make a note sound stronger by playing a note or two before it way softer. So they're not necessarily going to be ghost notes. Uh, that you're going to play before the note, but they're going to be so much softer that the accent is going to sound louder than it really is because you have soft notes before it. One way to make something sound louder and stronger is to play something softer before it. So take a listen to it. You hear that? So there's a C and a D before this E. If I play them full value, it sounds like this. So you still get this accented notes, but if I pull that C and that D back and make them way less important, that makes the E even stronger, even though I'm not really gonna play it that much louder than I would if I was doing a regular accent. Take a listen. You hear that? So I'm hitting the F before the first note, F, C, D, E. So I'm going ba ba doo ba instead of ba ba doo ba 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 doo ba I'm pulling that C and D back. So your second concept to make an accent sound really good is play the note or notes before the accent note softer so that the accent note has more power. The whole idea with the accent is to add power to the note. So there are a couple different ways we can do it and making the notes before them is definitely one that's going to shape your phrase and make it sound better and make your accent sound way crispier. Now the next concept on accents is what I call the THWOP, T-H-W-O-P accent, thwop. And I call it a thwop accent because that's what it sounds like. So I do that on a note that's like a fat quarter note to start a song. So this note starts on an A that's a quarter note off the beat and I thwop that note. So instead of just playing I make that first note a little bit fatter. You hear that little thing before the note? It's kind of like a grace note, but not necessarily a grace note. If I was going to do it as a grace note, it would sound. And we don't want that because the grace note isn't the same as an accent. So what I am doing is I am playing that A and I'm using these three fingers and I'm catching just the end of the note before I play it. Let me make sure you can see that. Uh, I'm catching just the end of this thing before I release it and I play the A. So you hear like a little bit of the end of the false fingering that comes before the note. Take a listen, I'm gonna stand up so you can see my fingers. 
I'm doing it a little bit slower so you can hear it. You hear that thing before it? That's the thwop. Now, I don't want this sound. I don't want that to be a big part of the note. So I do it really fast and try to just catch the very, very edge of the thwop note. The thwop note is the note before the actual note. Do you hear how that makes the note sound way more powerful? This is the thwop. And this is without the thwop. That thwop just gives you that little thing up front. It almost sounds like a echo before it or some kind of like little thing before the note that gives it way more power. Now, when you're using left hand notes, it's easy. You just add these three notes on the bottom. If you're doing uh, right hand notes, it's a little more difficult. You're gonna go from a C sharp. So I'm gonna go to a D and I'm gonna do open to the D. My first two had a little bit too much of the note. My second two were better. So you have to really practice it to get the thwop so that it's short enough that you don't hear the thing before it. You just hear it like as the echo, I guess the echo isn't really the right description because it's before the note. Uh, you just hear that thing. It's like the slap before the note. So you hear that little thing before the note? That's the thwop. If I don't use the thwop, if I do use the thwop, it just gives it more power. So I'm gonna play this first phrase. My first note is gonna be a thwop. My next accent, which is gonna be on a G, is gonna be a regular accent. And then my next accent, which will be on an E, is gonna be the ghost note accent. So I'm gonna go thwop, regular, ghost note. You hear that? Listen one more time. Now listen to the phrase if I just do regular accents. When you use those different type of accents, it gives you all kinds of motion. It gives you all kinds of texture in your plane. And that's what we're looking for. By doing that, it makes your uh, accents sound crispier. Now, the last type of accent that we're gonna talk about is gonna be your long note accent. When you have a long note, you're gonna almost always hit it hard, bring it down, and bring it back up. So you're gonna have a da wa that kind of sound. And a lot of times you're gonna do a tongue stop at the end. A tongue stop is when you stop the note with your tongue. So uh, I'll give you an example. You hear that A at the end? By doing that, I'm hitting the note, I'm axing it, I'm pulling it way back, and then I'm pushing it up and axing it again with the tongue stop. So I'm getting almost like a double accent on it. See how much better that sounds then? There's so much more texture in it. Now, every time you don't necessarily want to do a tongue stop, sometimes uh, you just want to let the note fade. To me, the tongue stop sounds better there. If I was going into another note, I might not use the tongue stop, but because this, this, this note ends the phrase, uh, I definitely want to use that tongue stop and it's going to make it sound crisper and cleaner. Now, listen to the whole phrase. I'm going to use the thwop accent, then a regular accent, then a ghost note accent, and I'm gonna end the phrase with a, uh, I didn't give it a name, but we're gonna hit it hard, bring it down, bring it back up, and use a tongue stop, so a long note accent. Take a listen. Now, let's listen to it without those accents. It's a big difference. And again, we're just doing like small little things, but by doing these small little things on these important notes, it makes your phrases sound way better. That's the secret to sounding like a more professional saxophone player is shaping the phrase through your dynamics and your articulation. So those are four different ways to accent a note and make your phrasing sound way better. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. If you now understand these four concepts in accenting a note, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel, Give me a thumbs up, leave me some comments, and share it with your friends. Thanks a lot.